The Opel Insignia GSI has a huge amount going for it. 210 brake horsepower, bi-turbo diesel engine, 4x4 all-wheel drive, Bose sound system, Intellilux LED matrix headlights, it even comes with Brembo brakes. And on the practical side, it has a massive boot. There's only one catch. I'll come back to that later on, but all in all, for an Opel, it is impressive. It has tons of features, starting with these beautiful 20-inch alloy wheels. Very easy to curb, but they look great. You get a bit of keyless going on. The blind spot is in the heads-up display. Yes, an Opel Insignia with a heads-up display. So you don't need it in the wing mirrors, you get it actually in your line of sight in the car. There's a nice sloping line down the side, kind of an extra bit of splitter action going on around the back, and more bumpers that have been kind of changed for the GSI model around the front. So you get these sweeping bits of silver over the front of the car. What's it like to drive? We'll be looking at that in the video. What's the inside like? What are the seats? They're very fancy. I'll, I'll give you that much of a clue before we jump inside. So there will be loads more of these videos coming on the channel. Hit subscribe if you haven't done so yet. And the little bell icon, feel free to pop that on as well. Next time there's a new video, you'll get a pop-up notification. It's a fancy enough boot lever actually. You just pop that in. That doesn't open up for you. Again, for the price of this car, I'm not telling you still what it is yet. You'd expect an electric boot. There's a little handle here for closing it though. That is handy. To give you an idea of the boot, well, it'll take a child's bike on its side very, very comfortably. The all important helmet is inside as well. You get a hatchback style boot. You pop off your usual hooks for your luggage compartment cover. The problem with this is it's so big, there's nowhere really that this is gonna go. So you're not gonna be able to just pop it into underneath somewhere in the car. The release for the rear seats it's not a manual button. No, no, it's electronic. Pull it, down they go. Unfortunately, you can't do the same to bring them back up. You've got to do it the old-fashioned way. And then when you have them fully laid back, it's massive. Definitely would have been a nice addition to have an electronic boot open and close on it. It doesn't have it, but say it'll be. Jumping into the back, there's a lot of legroom. It's the first thing you notice as soon as you get into it. Like, it's a huge amount of legroom. I would probably say this is, it must be nearly as good as the Skoda Superb legroom. Like, it's huge, like, look at that. Well, all this room. It's, uh, it's a little bit of a short bench here, so right up to your knees isn't fully supported. There's two eyes of fix, they're nicely tucked away if you don't need to use them. There's a center armrest, just the standard two holders there. You can't get access into the boot via that. Now, it's very much a, I suppose the two larger adults car in the back, yes, you'll definitely fit a third person, but there's quite a large raised floor, which does center to USB points. On the GSI model, there's two heated seat buttons here as well to keep you nice and toasty, and there's two air vents to keep you chilled. So everything's covered. These big Cobra-inspired seats, they do kind of restrict the view outwards of rear passengers. I don't know if that's really an issue, but there you go. You've got grab handles, little thing for your coat. The carbon fiber which actually for fake carbon fiber it, it it's classy it's it's polished and it looks well even though it's a sloping roof line in the design of the car it doesn't really impact on on head height so it's all good and there's no seat backs for storing things but the front gets a little bit more fancy if we want it for the price come take a look at this room for two child seats in the back of this car by the way you're not going to fit three Let's take a look at the front of the car where the action happens. And it's already beeping at me. What are you beeping for? I do like leg extenders. I love leg extenders. They always make a car in my head feel a premium. Leave me a comment if you agree. So you start it up and you get logos pumping at you everywhere. That's the kind of diesel noise of engine that you get. Controls are all good. I'm just gonna turn off that diesel engine just for the chatting part of the video. Uh, lovely chrome surround on the automatic gear shifter, a little GSI logo on that. You get buttons here that you can change stuff. There's a tour button, there's a sport button. I'll tell you more about what they do when we're driving. There's a storage area here at the front, no USBs on that. There's another storage area here for your phone. And then there's an armrest and there are two USBs in that. In fact, for your armrest, you take your phone and there's a squishy kind of rubbery thing that you can pop your phone into it. Just to give you an idea of how that works, it's just like a, that's it. Phone pops in there and that goes into the armrest. It's clever. There's also an auxiliary input in there. Your nav, it's reasonably fast. You can swoop around on that. 
not going to win any awards for how futuristic it looks or anything like that. I love the volume knob that doesn't rotate the actual logo as you're hiring it up and hiring it down. That's brilliant. A little weird thing that kind of bugs me. And there's your climate there. So you don't have to be going into levels on the touch screen. You can do it if you want, but most of the stuff that you'll want to use, you can easily get at, including your air-cooled seats, your heated seats. They're all standard in the GSI model of the car. In fact, the only thing that has been added to this car is wireless charging. Everything else that you see is standard, including these amazing seats. They're so supportive. They're AGR rated, which a lot of German quacks who get into a room and they design seats and it will squish you if you want on the bolsters. It will massage you. They are very, very comfortable. So supportive over the shoulder. So this is kind of a car that's gonna do a lot of motorway journeys I'd expect. And it would be perfect for that. Heads up display is a proper one. It projects onto the glass, no flippy up screen or anything like that. And you've got a few weird things like voltage displays and the oil temperatures, which are like needles, but digital needles. And I, I kind of like them, I think they look okay. Carbon fiber, I don't really see, the, you know, whatever carbon fiber, it's a diesel, but it does look well for carbon fiber, for pretend carbon fiber. And it's all very classy and it looks good. Storage for your bottles. It will take a large bottle in there. And there's, there's still room in the door bin, should you need it for that. Um, there's some twisty volume things down here that just get a little bit cheap. And as, as grand as it is soft there, straight away you're hired down here. And for the price, if you're trying to compete with the premium German saloon uh, market, you've got to try better than that because you just don't get away with that kind of stuff in those cars. However, up here, at those levels, it's lovely and it's stitched and looks nice. And it's, it's reasonably done. The indicator stocks and the windscreen wipers, they feel a little bit cheap. But then you're on this steering wheel, which is lovely, and it has heated steering wheel options. You can control everything from here. Your adaptive cruise control, your volume, obviously your heated uh, steering wheel. You can control the frontal impact sensors, your radar, everything from the touch of a button. There's loads of different displays and sensors. Like it'll tell you the car in front, how far away from it you are in seconds in terms of braking distance and stuff like that. So the sensors for frontal avoidance are very, very good. There is one or two occasions where I don't understand why it's doing the things it does. And I'll explain that more of that on the drive, which will go on very, very soon. So it's, it's very premium for an Opel. It's not premium enough for a premium German saloon, if you get me. There is no doubt it's a very eye-catching car. In fact, if it's good enough for Liverpool manager Jurgen Klopp, it's good enough for you and I. He actually has an estate GSA model. It's even an Opel one, not a Vauxhall badge, which means they had to get him the car possibly from Ireland. It's a 280 petrol, 280 brake horsepower petrol version of the car. Um, it just doesn't look at you and scream 54,000 euro, does it? There's some great safety features on board the Insignia. Frontal collision, all the stuff that is starting to become commonplace in cars is there. But there's also pedestrian avoidance and you'll see it in the heads up display. The car will pick up pedestrians and cyclists in your path and it will warn you with yellow warnings. Even if they're off to the right, like that lady is there, it spots her and it's gonna give you a warning when it needs to. Now, the brake function that flashes up to say brake, can be a little bit overzealous sometimes. You might be coming towards a car that's parked on the side of the road, you're about to drive around it, and in fact, you probably are already driving around it, and the car is giving you a massive warning and a red display in the windscreen through the heads of display that you should brake. And you're like, for what? It's four wheel drive, so it's gonna be a bit thirsty. You're talking just under 10, liters per 100 kilometers in terms of fuel consumption now it's 210 brake horsepower as well so it's not a slouch and in fact it does have slightly more power than the majority of premium entry level uh, you're talking about the a6 with the the smaller engines and the bmw 520d it does have slightly more power than them and you're going to be paying for a lot more for something like quattro on your a6 that again is standard on this car but it's just for the price new, why would you be paying this level 
when you could get something with an Audi or a BMW badge on the front of it. And I think that's the biggest problem for this car. There's a lot of stuff that this car has going for it if you could just make it a bit cheaper. I'm sorry to keep banging on about it. The people on Opel said, we know it's expensive. OPC models in the past from Opel suffered from torque steer. There's actually torque vectoring in this car, which basically means to the rear wheels, it can give extra power or cut the power to individual wheels to help the car handle better. And that coupled with four wheel drive, it really does handle very well. It's not wanting in torque either. There's over 400 newton meters of torque from low down in the rev range. So although it hesitates slightly on acceleration if you're pulling out of a junction or away from a set of traffic lights, it doesn't take you long until this thing is propelling you with pace down the road. It's not a problem there either. Delivery is kind of nearly like a V6 diesel, that kind of, oh, here we go. That's the best way I could describe it. You have an eight speed gearbox, really slick, really smooth. There are paddles and sport mode if you want to do it. Sport mode brings me on to something else as well. So here beside your lane departure buttons and all that stuff is a tour button. Now, this car is on 20 inch rims as standard. The Michelin Pilot Sport tires, which the car comes with, are really, really thin. So you're gonna feel every single bump. However, you can press that tour button and it's adaptive suspension, it's noticeably smoother over speed bumps, imperfections in the road. You really do notice it's definitely not a gimmick. Again, that's standard on the car. And that's important with saloon cars that want to be a bit sporty and want to also carry families around because you have to be able to compromise with it and there's lots of ways that the Insignia GSI can do that for you. Now into a corner like this and you like it absolutely grips there is no budging on it whatsoever. Huge level of confidence then when I want to push on in this car. I'm already doing speeds I shouldn't be from that little burst away from the traffic lights. And it's like, it is the ultimate motorway cruiser. It's not gonna let you down whatsoever on motorways. It's just the German Autobahn is what this car will really come into its own on. Now, the closer we're gonna to get to that in Dublin, is the M50. Um, but that's where the car feels most comfortable. Smooth surfaces don't really cause any issues with the suspension. Tons of grip from those tyres and you know how we like our rain in Ireland so four wheel drive is an absolute welcome addition as standard. The car is well insulated however there's quite a bit of tyre noise off those 20 inch so it does intrude in the cabin quite a bit. It's not that it doesn't feel executive and a little bit luxurious and certainly something that you jump into and you go, oh, this is, this is not your normal Opel. Absolutely. It's just, there's too much competition around the price of it. And apart from people who are fans of Opel, and they do exist, they absolutely do exist. People have bought OPCs 10 years ago and now have families. They would probably be getting a bit of the flutters watching this car but for everybody else I just don't know if it's priced keenly enough that it's going to tempt you away from something like an Audi A6 or a BMW 5 series and that's the problem thank you for watching this episode please do hit subscribe on the channel it's always appreciated if you've got a question leave one in the comment section like the video if you've enjoyed watching it and maybe even share it as well if you want to pass it on see you soon